Hello, this is the first in a set of videos where we will explore loop structures in Java. One thing I want to say before we go forward is I'm going through how to write loop structures in Java, but the reality is this logic extends to all programming languages. Um, in the future, you could very well find yourself programming in a variety of languages, and what you learn here will be the same in terms of logic. The syntax might change a little bit, but the logic is, is the same. And that's really important to, to bear in mind as you're learning a language. Um, the second thing I want to kind of briefly talk about is the idea of the best programming language. It's inevitable that beginning programmers always say, you know, Java is the best programming language, or Python is the best programming language. And what I hope you learn as you continue to develop your skills is that there isn't a best programming language. There is a best programming language for a specific task. Um, as you start to explore other languages, and I encourage you to, you'll find that different languages lend themselves to different tasks um, easier. So with that in mind, let's begin. So a loop structure is essentially a structure that will execute a code of block, uh, sorry, a block of code a number of times. We can break loop structures up into two broad categories, conditional loops and counted loops. Conditional loops are loops that have to occur a number of times, but you don't necessarily know. Um, so the classic example would be, perhaps you wanted to give someone, you wouldn't want someone to move on in the program until they entered a specific code. So it continually prompts that person for that code over and over again. It might do it once, twice, a hundred times. And the two types of conditional loops we're interested in are while loops and do while loops. The second type of loop, loop classification we can think about is counted loops. Counted loops are particularly useful when we know exactly how many times something needs to happen. And in Java, we're interested in what are called for loops and for each loops. Now, bearing that in mind, when it comes down to it, all loop structures are conditional loop structures because they all have to check a condition to make a decision about what to do. So what we have here on the, the right-hand side of the screen is a flow diagram which shows kind of the thinking for a loop structure. There could be some code above it, which is the initialization of the, of the code. And then we get to the loop logic right here. And that's going to check a condition. It could check equivalence if something is greater than something, if something is less than something. And if that happens to be true, it will enter the code block for the loop and execute that loop code. And then when it gets to the end of the block, it's going to come back up and check that loop logic again. And it might go into the, if it's true again, it's going to go into the loop code and come back around and check it again. And if it happens to be false, it will skip the block and continue on with the program. You can use any either a conditional or counted loop for any situation. But a good question to always ask yourself when you start to implement loop structures is, do I know exactly how many times this loop has to execute before getting to the loop? If, that, if the answer to that is yes, the counted loop is the right one for you. The best way to develop an understanding of loop structures is to make a lot of little silly programs. And that's what we're going to do in the next couple of videos. Good luck.